Hey guys, welcome back to our Mississippi State Dynasty. Today I'm bringing you some mid-season stats here. I know it's a little bit, you know, past mid-season, but I'm going to bring it to you anyway because I don't really care. So let's get right into it. we got Miami Hurricanes are the number one team in the nation. we got Sean Taylor leading the team in tackles with 54. Uh, Jerome McDougal with 10 sacks. Taylor also has four interceptions. Ken Dorsey's playing lights out with 25 touchdowns and five picks. The Florida Gators coming at number two in the nation. Rex Grossman is a quarterback. He's thrown 20 touchdowns and 10 interceptions, 2,300 yards. Number three, we got the Oklahoma Sooners, who just clobbered Colorado 45 to 10. Jason White is a quarterback. He's thrown 23 touchdowns and nine picks, 2,500 yards. Teddy Lehman leads their team in tackles. Uh, Tennessee Volunteers, we get to play them right after we face Alabama, which will be coming out in the next couple days. They're a very dangerous team. Their quarterback has only thrown four interceptions, which leads the nation for least amount of interceptions thrown. Washington Huskies are number five. Cody Pickett has thrown 21 touchdowns and seven picks. Pretty solid team. They just beat UCLA in a nail-biter, 29-27. Nebraska's at 6, Texas 7, Colorado's 8 after the loss to Oklahoma, Louisville's 9, Florida State 10, Virginia Tech 11, Georgia Purdue, Texas A&M, UCF, who just lost to Syracuse, Marshall, Boise State, Utah, Washington State, Illinois, USC. A lot of solid teams in the top 25. Here's our conference standings. We lead the SEC West at the moment, but that could all change if we fall to Alabama in Tuscaloosa. That would shake up the entire West region. Uh, the Florida Gators and the Tennessee Volunteers are fighting for that top spot in the East. There's Kentucky down at the bottom. We just beat them. Well, here's our uh, season stats for a team. Not very good. As you can see, we're on the bottom of pretty much every single list right now. Our defense is pretty good. We lead the SEC West in uh, rushing yards per game. Past defense is dead last in the SEC West. Not surprising. Our secondary has been pretty awful all season. And it's not going to get much better next season because we're going to lose three of our four corners. Our only corner that's going to be on the team next year is Slovakia Griffith since he is a sophomore. Everybody else is a senior. We'll lose Josh Morgan, Walter Burdett, Demetric Wright, Corey Banks. It's, it's not going to be good next year for our secondary, just like it's not good this year. I'm going to have to recruit a bunch of guys for our secondary. Well, there's Ole Miss leading in efficiency. They've got Eli Manning at quarterback, so that's not really surprising that they're on top of the efficiency uh leaderboards here in the West. We get them in the final game of the season for us. That should be a really interesting game. I'm not sure who we have after Tennessee. I know we got Alabama next, Tennessee after that. I think it might be Arkansas, and then we've got Ole Miss. It's going to be a tough few games that we have at the end of the year. But I'm looking forward to it. You see we are first in penalties, we only have 26, but 280 yards on penalties, that's pretty crazy. As you can see, we haven't really given the ball away too much, but we also haven't taken the ball away very much. So I'm hoping the new recruits coming in next year, that that'll change. It's going to have to if we're going to compete in the SEC year in and year out. Well, here's our NCAA rank for our stats. We're not very good on offense. Rushing yards is our best. We're 41st in the country for yards per game. Everything else is pretty awful. <laughs> pretty, pretty awful. Defense, we're pretty solid until you look at the passing yards allowed per game. We're 101st out of 117. We are dead last in sacks. That makes me really sad. Only six sacks by our defense this year. And we got three of them last game against Kentucky. That's pathetic. Only ten turn, uh, takeaways. These are efficiency rankings. Dead last in third down attempts. So, I mean, that might be a good stat. 
you know, I don't know about that, but I mean, I guess the least, you know, the least amount of third downs could be good. That means we're getting first downs on second, first down. Who knows? We've only thrown five interceptions, which is good for a third in the country. Of course, Tennessee is number one in our conference with only four thrown. That's why we're second. And for bowl games, we're looking at a Capital One Citrus Bowl bid at the moment against Michigan State. That would be pretty crazy. As you can see, there's the passing stats. Kevin Fant has only thrown one interception this season, but he is just not very good. Most of his touchdowns are just, you know, chuck it up and pray. Like half of them are to Jarius Norwood. But we've been sacked about a million times this year. Ken Tops leads our team in rushing by far. That's not even close. He's also tied with Justin Griffith for touchdowns on the season. He has the longest rush of 43 yards. He leads the team in broken tackles, and he's fumbled it nine times, so maybe next year's carry will be a little bit better. That'd be nice. Ray Ray Bivens, 19 catches, 618 yards. He's averaging 32.5 yards per catch. That's insane. I mean, that's just ridiculous. It's like Randy Moss's rookie season for the Minnesota Vikings. And here's our amazing offensive line stats. I mean, it doesn't matter who I put at what position, they can't block anybody. And we took Weathers out um, midway through the season, so that's why he hasn't allowed any more sacks. He hasn't played another snap since. Corey Brown, two sacks on the season. He got them both last game against Kentucky. Gabe Wallace, our right outside linebacker, leads the team in interceptions. Our linebackers have more interceptions than our defensive backs. That's sad. The Slovakia Griffith balling. Oh yeah. Pretty sure that's my favorite name of all time. John Michael Marlin, 5 of 9 on the season. Jared Cook doing a pretty decent job, 39.6 yards per punt. Kick return, uh, Dante Walker and Corey Banks have been pretty good for us since I put them into the special teams formation. Punt return, we haven't done anything on punt returns at all this whole season except for fumble the ball. But here's the season leaders for the nation. Luke McCown is number one in passing yards. Cliff Kingsbury, Byron Leftwich, Dave Ragone, Chris Sims, Ben Roethlisberger is six. Timmy Chang at seven for Hawaii. Jason White is at eight. Ryan Schneider for UCF, who's having a really good season. He's number nine. I believe I missed the 10th player. Oh well. Dave Ragone leads the country in touchdowns with 27. Byron Leftwich, 26. JP Losman, 25. Ken Dorsey, 25. Chris Sims, 23. Jason White, Lawson, Kyle Orton, and uh, Cody Pickett. 21 touchdowns, 7 picks. That's a pretty good season for the Washington Huskies. Least amount of interceptions. Thomas Cox for UAB. Jake Cutler has thrown the most interceptions. He's a true freshman this year. He's thrown 11 touchdowns and 19 interceptions. Nothing really surprising there, honestly. Brody Croyle. We're going to go up against him in our next game. 7 touchdowns, 17 interceptions. So, our secondary should do pretty decent against him, I hope. I hope. I'm going to pray on that. Next, we'll move on to rushing stats. The nation's leader is Chad Brinker from Ohio. Redshirt senior. Maurice Claret is second. 1,441 yards, 15 touchdowns. Uh, Darren Diedrich from Nebraska. My goodness, 23 touchdowns. He's in the Heisman race, as you can see on the top right. Chris Brown. 1,273 yards, 11 touchdowns. Lee Suggs, 1,259, 12 touchdowns. Antonio Harris has 11 touchdowns, 1,200 yards. Derek Ward with six touchdowns, 1,200 yards. Akil Harris, 1,196. Marion Barber the third. That's another familiar name. 1,148 yards, 11 touchdowns. Another familiar name, Darren Sproles. He's got 15 touchdowns. He's a true sophomore. Dave 
Javon Coburn, 11 touchdown. Receiving leaders, Ward, Anton Page, Sean Dillard, Michael Larkin, Jericho Cotri, Carlos Francis, and here's Malcolm Floyd from Wyoming, 6'6", 206 pounds. That's a big wide receiver. There's Bernard Barron with 1,007 yards. DJ Johnson from Texas, he's got 1,000. And Brian Johnson from Penn State is one yard shy of 1,000 yards. Roydell Williams leads the nation in touchdown receptions with 14. John Staniford has 13. James Newson with 11. Bernard Barron's got 11. Roy Williams with 10. He's a junior. Billy Ford, a senior from SMU, 10 touchdowns. Chris Collins from Ole Miss, we get to play them in the last game of the year. He's got 10 touchdowns as well. Hunter Hillenmeyer and Gary Brackett lead the country in tackles, 109 apiece. We don't have anyone even remotely close to that number. There's Ryan Fowler, Peace Latino Isamoa, Kirk Morrison, Richard Sophomore, he's having a really good season. Chase Blackburn with 95 tackles, Colin Jenkins, Osu Minora, he was a monster against us. Vic Valoria. Tackles for a loss. Colin Jenkins, uh, Kenichi Udizi, Erasmus James, Rusty Williams, Marcus Pratt, Norma Bailey, Gary Brackett, Gerard Ramirez, Demarcus Ware, also a monster against us in the upset loss to Troy State. Erasmus James, Kenichi Udizi lead the, lead, lead the country in sacks with 14 apiece. Antonio Garay, he's got 12. Demarcus Ware, 11. Boise State player with 11 sacks. Joe Sellers from Ohio has nine interceptions on the season. That's crazy. DJ Walker from UTEP, six foot three safety. That's a big safety. Connie Brown. UNLV, Nathan Vasher with six interceptions from Texas. Tom Seabrooks with six. Here's the pass deflections. Most Western player with 15. There's three tied with 15 and a bunch at 14 deflections. Scott Shanley, linebacker from Nebraska. Kabodi Sikiala. Another awesome name. Roman Harper, we get to play against him next week. He's got 14 deflections. Retro freshman, free safety. We're going to try to uh, pick him apart, though. He's a free safety freshman, so. <laughs> he doesn't have a whole lot of experience yet. Peace with Tinui Samoa, Gary Brackett, and Jarvie Worcester with six forced fumbles on the year. That's more than our entire team. Lance Briggs. Senior middle linebacker from Arizona. Seth McEwain, he had a fumble recovery against us in week one. I was not happy about that. There's Jorma Bailey again. Seems to be having a pretty good season. Two blocks for Weston. Troy Palomalu's got a block. He's a senior. He'll be going off to the NFL. See who drafts him. I'm sure he'll go in the first round. Monte Leach, who's playing linebacker at the moment. He's got two safeties on the year. Jason Babin, defensive tackle for Western Michigan. McNutt, he's got three touchdowns on defense. I don't think we have any defensive touchdowns this season. Garen Fox, got two touchdowns. Nate Kading, there we go, that's another familiar name. He's got 24 of 29 on the season for kicks. There's Matt Prater, 22 of 24, the long of 53. Nate Kading's long was a 55 yarder, my goodness. We're lucky if John Michael Marlin can make a 40-yarder. I don't think he can. Josh Scobie, 56-yard field goal this season. Sean Sweezum, 
He's 17 of 18. Matt Prater, 91. Todd Seavers, 88%. I don't think we'll ever have a kicker that can kick that long. That's insane. Andy Lee, 47.2 yard average per punt. Long of 82 on the year. My goodness. Eighty-two yards. Eighty-one for Castelli. And another player had an 80 yarder. Mark Ferguson for San Jose State leads the country in kick return yards with 1166. Jeez. Their defense must be real bad. He's returned 54 kickoffs this season. Tim Walter, wide receiver for Eastern Michigan. Avon Colburn with the longest kick return this year, 104 yards. He's got two returns for touchdowns. Cato June, free safety for Michigan, has a touchdown. Hayward Skipper with two touchdowns. Ken Hamlin with two. Free safety for Arkansas. We get to face them after Tennessee. So we'll try to kick the ball away from him as much as possible. That's Sonoris Moss doing a really good job for Miami on returns. Chris Brown is just doing everything for Colorado. Keeping them relevant this year. Kelly Washington for Tennessee. We got a part return touchdown. We'll try to kick it away from him as well. Nate Burleson for Nevada. He's got a touchdown. Alright now, let's take a look at the Awards. Heisman, we got Darren Diedrich uh, leading the Heisman vote at the moment. Dave Ragone is second. You can see the numbers at the top right. Uh, Lee Suggs in third. Darren Sproles in fourth. John Standiford, wide receiver from Purdue, is in fifth. As you can see, Darren Sproles also has some kick and punt return yards and a couple receiving touchdowns. Offensive MVP is pretty much all the same people, except this time Maurice Claret is on that list. Best quarterback is Ben Roethlisberger, Byron Leftwich, Cody Pickett, and Jason White, along with Dave Ragon, leading them. Best running back, all familiar names. Best wide receiver, Roydell Williams, Bernard Berrien, BJ Johnson, and Anton Page for Texas Tech. Of line, we won't see any of our guys in there. There's Jordan Gross, he'll be a first round draft pick. George Foster might be a first round draft pick as well. Pisa Tinui Samoa leading the defensive MVP. Nichi Udizi is right behind him. Eddie Strong, Kieran Fox. Eddie Strong having a monster season. I'm not looking forward to facing them. <laughs> Eli Manning and a solid defense. I think Ken Tops is going to be running for his life even more in that game than any other one. Best linebacker, piece of team, Luis Samoa. Jason Carwright, Gary Brackett, Eddie Strong again, Kieran Fox. Best defensive back, the GOAT, Sean Taylor, my favorite player of all time. Obviously leading that. Eight pass deflections, four picks, and 54 tackles. Derek Johnson, Nathan Vasher, DJ Walker, and Joe Sellers from Ohio. Best kicker, Nate Kading. See Matt Prater on there. Next to Pace, Brian Huffman, Josh Scobie. We are not on the Coach of the Year list at the moment. I'm trying. We'll get there. That's going to do it for the stats. I will be bringing you the Alabama game real soon. Take it easy.